Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I'm going to be talking to you about using napkins. Now, believe it or not, this uh, technique tag has been created using a napkin. They are really inexpensive, readily available. Uh, I got mine from, I think I got these ones from eBay. There's thousands of different designs and colours you can choose from. So um, you may have some left over from maybe Christmas or a party or something. So you can get playing with those. So I'm going to show you not only how to use the napkin, how to apply them to your tags or of course your mixed media projects. I'm also going to show you how to create a striking background to make sure they really pop. So this is my selection of napkins that I have and I've, as I said, ordered all of these really inexpensively uh, from places like eBay and Amazon. Um, they usually come in like either four packs or 10 packs. That's more than enough for you to work with because many of them are double sided. Um, many of them just they open right up into large sheets so you're going to find you've got plenty to work with for now so I think I'm going to go with this blue one it's really pretty now I'm going to be referring back to um, a video on color theory I'll link that just up here for you it's within the mixed media 10 minute technique series and that one talked about complementary colors which is also if you like to think of it as contrasting colors so opposites on the color wheel so i'm going to do that with this this is going to be mostly blue so i'm going to use the yellows oranges as a background for these and you can do the same with your design pick out a color that is actually completely the opposite of what you are using and use that as your background to really make these pop so with napkins, what I tend to do is just take one and open it up. This one is single sided. They tend to use, usually also be um, two sheets. So just separate those, which gives you an even thinner sheet. Now you may be wondering, well, why am I not just going to stick that sheet directly down onto my project? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that, because first of all, you can, of course, you can put this straight down on your project not an issue at all but you're not going to be able to raise this up you're not going to be able to pick out a small area very easily and cut into it neatly and you're also not going to be able to then do things like inking the edges or stitching on it and things like that so I just always find it easier if we go on to another sheet of cardstock or paper first now I'm just choosing a scrap of cardstock that I had in my stash and my preferred glue is a collage medium so this is the distress range this is a matte um, you can't then put water-based um, mediums over the top of this. It does resist them, but um, it's translucent. It dries completely clear. So I'm going to use this underneath, and I'm not. I'm going to be wary of not putting this on top of the tissue paper in case I want to add some ink later, which is quite likely. So I'm going to just smear some of this glue over with the nozzle first of all. Quite a good covering there. And then I'm going to use a brush and just brush that in. Now you must remember to wash your brush um, thoroughly with warm soapy water once you've been using collage medium or your wet glue because it will dry very quickly in the bristles. Now I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to screw my tissue paper up really quite tightly and then very, very gently. You can do this before you add your glue. Very gently just open it up like so and lay it onto my paper and without stretching it out I'm just going to press down just using my fingers to kind of pounce down onto it so I'm keeping the wrinkles and then as you start pressing into that the wrinkles will remain I really really love this effect you can of course if you prefer if you've got a detailed image then you really want to keep the image clean and crisp you can put this down completely smooth now once that's glued you can start pressing down any really raised areas you'll remain with that texture so let's just have a look at this really close up so you can really see the wrinkles and the texture around the flower there when I hold it flat hopefully you can see it's not smooth at all as I say this is totally optional if you prefer you can smooth it down completely flat so just cutting away at the excess there and this bit I didn't glue down the bottom and I'll definitely save this for another time to use again as long as you're gentle with it and you don't get any tears in it it's absolutely good to go for a second craft project and this one I'm going to cut into some circles so I've just got some dies here so I'm positioning them so that I've got a good amount of the blues in each one I might just move that round there actually so I've got a hint of the yellow there just like so okay 
beautiful. So I'm going to tack those down with low tack tape and then run that through my die cutting machine. Now this doesn't have to be circles, it could be hexagons, stars, squares, whatever you fancy. But either way, we are just cutting some shapes using the dies to get a nice, clean, crisp image on that tissue paper. So we've got some beautiful embellishments there. Aren't they stunning? Now to make these really pop on this background, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go around the edge of them with an ink and it's going to be an ink that matches really nicely with the blues that are in my napkin. You might have pinks, greens, whatever your kind of main colour is throughout the design. Go with that one and just lightly ink around the edges. So I've chosen prize ribbon, which is a nice, it's like a royal blue. And just to capture only the edges, I'm going to brush upwards rather than downwards. And this will just give me a nice small edge. That one I see, so I went over the edge of the paper there. So I just need to be really careful with that piece. There we go. I did wonder why that bit hadn't stuck. There was no cardstock underneath for it to stick to. And then the same under here, just brushing in an upwards motion. So now I need to be thinking about my contrasting colour. Um, so for me, as I said, this is going to be a yellow or an orange because this is opposite blue on the colour wheel. Doesn't have to be directly opposite, roughly opposite is a nice contrasting or actually complementary colour for this, but it's really going to make this stand out. So I've chosen my complementary colour. It's fossilised amber, which is a nice warm yellow. And here's another technique for you thrown in with this napkin one as well. I'm going to be pressing a lid into the ink. So just like so, making sure the lid is completely covered with the yellow and then pressing that down and giving it a little twist, just like so. And I'll do that a few times. And this is with Distress Oxide. You do need to use something that is water reactive for this. And then I'm going to take my water spray bottle and spritz these and watch that colour just run beautifully. Now it's up to you whether you decide you want to keep those circles or let them completely fade out with extra water. Just keep adding water until you're happy with the look and again as always hold down in the centre because that's going to avoid everything running to the edges. I'm going to allow that to dry and then do something just one more thing to the background before we put our circles on. Look at that fabulous effect. It looks almost like you've kind of had bubbles pop on there because you've got those loose circles of nothingness. Um, but yeah, really beautiful effect. But I'm just going to add a little more to this by doing my usual smooshing a bit of ink onto a piece of plastic and taking some water and just very lightly watering that down so I'm not watering it down too much at all. Ideally you want to have the bristles quite wet on this and I'm just going to put it into the ink and pick up as much ink as possible. And then I'm going to hover this over my piece of paper and I'm going to tap. Now you can do this in a number of ways. You can either flick your wrist if you're strong enough. You can tap with your forefinger or if you need to you can take your other hand and you can do two fingers. Let me just hold this with the other one. Two fingers and you can really hit on that like so. Either way, whichever way you prefer, I usually do a little bit of a sort of flick and tap and it's not controlled. You're not going to be able to control where this is going very easily at all. We're just adding some deeper, darker colours to the tag here. So it's looking really lovely as a distressed background. Let's clean up the paintbrush, clean up the excess ink on there and then put our circles on top. So now my background's dry, I can put my circles on. Now, if these circles were just napkins, I wouldn't be able to raise them up. If I want to here, I can now put them down with a uh, foam tape, for example. You can separate them, but I do like to overlap them just a little. So just like so. I mean, look how much they pop with that bright yellow in the background. As I say, you can use absolutely any napkin here you want to, and you can also go with any colour you want to as well. But I definitely advise going for an alternative colour that's not the same as what you've got inside the napkins. So I've overlapped these two and I'm just going to leave a slight gap between the top one, the largest one and the smallest one, uh, just to show you different compositions you can do. Um, but doesn't that really pop and really stand out? Now you can also do this with patterned papers if you don't have napkins. Obviously you won't have to 
um, smooth those down, glue them to cardstock first of all. But I just think that the um, the texture that we get with the napkins, the wrinkles, and that softer feel to it as well is so much nicer than just your average patterned paper. And this is a great way of making them pop on your projects too. They really can be the focal point, albeit a background, but you can really bring those designs forward. So this is another tag that I'm now going to add to my Technique tags. Um, I've got them all on key rings here. I absolutely love them. I'm actually going to be creating some uh, wording for the back for these that you can print off. So we've got all of these different techniques that we've tried out so far. Um, if you're interested and you've not seen these, I've actually got a tutorial for each and every one of these available in the playlist. I'll make sure that's linked here. I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you can do that here. And that other video on colour I'll make sure is linked just up here for you. Thank you everybody, take care and I hope you have a fabulous day.